physiological response of the organism. After looking at some definitions of stress, we focus our attention on the physiology of stress or what happens to our body when it is stressed, which is if too much muscle or nervous psychical activity is present, the level of catecholamines in the blood increases. Tyrosine derivatives, catabolic or stress hormones such as adrenaline, noradrenaline and dopamine, these are a group of hormones secreted by the adrenal glands. They have a number of effects such as increased blood levels, blood sugar levels, etc. Immediately a response to the nervous system arises, which activates the sympathetic nervous system, which is also called SNS a sympathetic part of the nervous system that speeds up heart activity, expands the bronchi, suppresses the movement and secretion of the digestive system, blocks the excretory system, increases the intraocular pressure, enlarges the pupils of the eyes and so on. What is more, the function of catecholamines is to activate the hypothalamus, a higher center of the autonomic nervous system, which is formerly called the vegetative nervous system and which also has excretory functions, that is, it also functions as an internal secretory gland located at the base of the cerebellum and its hormonal secretion by which it is able to regulate body temperature, appetite, excretory system, blood sugar levels. Adrenal hormones serve as mediators, triggering the already created and accumulated hypothalamic hormones by which they act on glands such as the pituitary gland. Probably much of the nervous system reaction is provoked by the hypothalamus, which has a pronounced neuroregulatory function. The hypothalamus also has a proven relationship to sleep and alertness. Modern science attributes to the hypothalamus stimulus and some of the emotions. For example, fear and fury can be induced artificially by stimulating the hypothalamus. These two feelings are a common companion in stressful situations. By stimulating the hypothalamus, it is also proven its connection with motivation, with the emergence of a certain desire to do something, although in this case the connection is more complicated and dependent on other factors. However, the relationship continues. The hypothalamus produces groups of hormones classified as releasing, releasing factors, releasing hormones, or liberins and statins, through the anterior pituitary, also called the adenohypophysis or pars anterior. Liberins activate the secretion of pituitary hormones and the statins block that same secretion. For example, Somatoliberin and somatostatin release or block the secretion of somatotrophin, also known as human growth hormone, corticotrophin releasing hormone, TRH or corticoliberin, tyrotrophin releasing hormone, TRH or tyroliberin, and gonadotrophin releasing hormone, GNRH or gonadoliberin, respectively activate the secretion of corticotrophin, tyrotrophin and gonadotrophin. Through the adenohypophysis, the hypothalamus may actually affect the adrenal glands. For example, it can affect the factor that unleashes stress or the gonads, even the thyroid gland. That is the entire endocrine system and hence the whole organism. All these processes taking place in our body, as we said above, have a specific purpose, adaptation and survival. And the main answer that our oldest brain from the limbic system has is to come down to three basic actions, two of which we can call conditionally passive and one active, namely freezing, escaping and battle. All these processes are the preparation of the body to react to the stressful situation.